Pergamon is a game for two to four players by Stefan Dora and Ralph Serlind. The goal of the game is to excavate and display the most enticing collections of ancient artifacts in the prestigious Pergamon Museum. The player who gets the most admission tickets from their exhibits will win the game. Place the game board on the table. Take the 24 research funding cards and shuffle them all into one deck and place it face down near the right edge of the board. Note that the cards have two different backs, but they all go into the same deck. Place the round marker on January on the calendar, like this. Then collect all 66 artifact tiles and place them into the bag, giving them a good mix. Make a stock of coins next to the board, and then stack the admission tickets on the corresponding spaces on the board. Next, each player takes the excavator, museum markers, and display markers of their color as well as a reminder card and two coins to start the game with. The first player will be the oldest player at the table, or you can pick the first player at random. Place their excavator figure on the turn order track in position 1, and then the rest of the players in clockwise order around the table. This will be the turn order for the start of round one, but the turn order will change between rounds as the game progresses. You're now ready to start the first round of play. The game of Pergamon takes place over 12 rounds of play, each one corresponding to one month on the calendar board. Each round has four phases. One, placing artifact tiles in the gallery. Two, distributing research funds. Three, excavating, exhibiting, and storing artifacts, and then phase four, evaluations, which you only complete in certain rounds. More on those later. In the placing artifacts phase, the first player takes the artifact tile bag and pulls new artifact tiles one at a time and places them into the excavation site on the left side of the board. The number of tiles pulled each round is shown on the calendar here. So in the first round you pull 8 tiles, then 7 in round 2, 6 in round 3, and then 5 for all the rest of the rounds. The excavation site has 5 galleries in it, with gallery 1 having the most recent artifacts and gallery 5 having the oldest. When placing new tiles in the galleries, you must place the tile in the gallery that matches the century number listed on the tile in the lower right here. So this third century tile goes in gallery 3. If you fill a gallery with four tiles and then pull another tile that should go in the same one, then the first player decides to place it either up or down one gallery. If both adjacent galleries are also full, then place it two galleries away, and so on. In the unlikely case that all the galleries are full, discard any extra artifact tiles pulled to the box. During the Distributing Research Funds phase, players will try to acquire funding and secure the rights to excavate certain galleries. The first player draws two cards from the funding deck without looking at the fronts and places them here next to the board. The backs of the cards indicate the possible range of funding on the front side of the card. The bags have 1 to 4 coins on them, and the chests have 5 to 8 coins on them. Using this information, players bid for funding by placing their excavator on one of these research funding spaces. The bidding order is determined by the player order at the side of the board, starting with the first player. In order, players select one of the spaces on the research funding track, which determines how much funding you can get and which galleries you will be allowed to dig from later in the round. For example, this space lets me gain up to three coins and dig in galleries one and two, while this space also lets me gain up to three coins, but I could dig in galleries one through three. Each player must select one space to put their excavator figure on, and once a space is taken, no other player can choose it. However, the funding you request is not guaranteed, 
which is where these two cards come back into play. Once all players have selected a funding space, the funding cards are revealed and the first player gathers as many coins as the cards say. In this example, the cards say 2 and 6, so I would gather 8 coins from the supply. Now the first player distributes these funds going from right to left down the funding track. Each player gets paid the amount of funding they requested in right to left order until the funding runs out. So this player gains one coin, then this player gets two coins, the next three, and now the last player requested four coins, but there's only two left, so they just get the two remaining coins. If we had less funding this round, for example having to bag funding cards adding to four, then the first and second player in line still get their funds, but now the third player only gets one coin, and this player at the back gets nothing. If we had more funding this round, for example having two chest funding cards adding to 13, then all the players can get the funding they requested. And since there is leftover funding, in this case three extra coins, that all goes to the player furthest to the left on the funding track as well, giving them seven total coins this turn. So placing your excavator at the back of the line is risky. It could gain you a lot of extra funding, or it could mean all the funds get taken by the other players and you end up with nothing. Once all players have been given their funds for the round, we move to the next phase. In this phase, players will take turns excavating artifact tiles, putting them into exhibits, and storing any extras. The turn order for this phase is based on the player's positions on the research spaces, with the rightmost space going first and continuing to the left down the line. On your turn, you may take up to all the tiles of any one gallery in the excavation site. However, you can only choose from the galleries that your research space allows you to pick from. In this case, any gallery 1 through 3. Notice how the front space on the funding track doesn't supply any funds, but it does guarantee you will go first while excavating, and you're allowed to dig in any gallery 1 through 5. There is also a cost to digging in a gallery depending how deep it is. The number of the gallery is the cost in coins to dig there, regardless of how many tiles are in the row. For example, here you could pay one coin to get two tiles in this top gallery, or pay three coins to get four tiles in this middle gallery. Once you select a gallery, pay the cost to the supply and take all the artifact tiles from the site, placing them in front of you. Remember you can only excavate from one gallery in a turn, and you can also not excavate at all if you don't want to. Next, you can exhibit one or more collections of artifact tiles at the museum. To assemble a collection, you need artifact tiles with both matching halves of the same artifact. There are masks, jugs, vases, and bracelets. One collection is made up of however many artifacts you wish in one long chain, and the older your artifacts are, the more valuable your collection will be. You cannot have any non-matching tiles in your collection. You are free to rearrange your artifact tiles as much as you like, but once they are in a collection in the museum, they cannot be moved. If you have a collection you want to exhibit, place a display marker in your color at the front of the collection. The number doesn't make a difference, it's only for you to keep track of the collections in the museum. You find the value of the collection by adding up all the centuries of the complete artifacts in it, which are these numbers here. So this collection would be 5 plus 3 plus 5, a value of 13. Also, when you exhibit a new collection, you may spend 1 to 3 coins to polish the artifacts, increasing the collection's value by 1 for each coin spent this way. We'll use the maximum 3 coins in this example, raising this collection to a value of 16. Now that we know the value of the collection, 
we take the matching round museum marker and put it in the Pergamon Museum on the board on the corresponding space, 16 in this example. The highest value space in the museum is 24 here. If your collection is valued higher than that, it simply goes on the 24 space instead. Whenever you add a new collection to the museum, you immediately gain one victory point, which we use these admission tickets to keep track of. The admission tickets come in denominations of 1, 2, 5, and 10 victory points. Whenever you gain points, you take the corresponding tickets from the supply and put them in front of you face down. You're also allowed to make change at any time with the supply by exchanging equal amounts of tickets. Also, when you exhibit a new collection, all the existing collections that are of equal or lesser value drop in popularity, moving one space down the museum track. For example, if we were placing that 16 value collection here, the other player's collection on space 16 moves down to 15. This 12 becomes an 11, and this 7, which is another of my own collections, also moves down to a 6. If a collection ever needs to move below the 1 space, remove its museum marker from the museum and return it to the player, who now must break up the collection and return all its tiles to the box, not the bag. Also, if you already have three collections in the museum, and want to exhibit a new one, you will have to take one of your markers in the museum back, breaking up its matching collection and returning those tiles to the box before making a new one. At the end of your turn, any artifact tiles you have not exhibited yet will be stored for the next turn. You can store up to three tiles for free, but after that, each set of up to three tiles costs an additional coin to store. For example, storing four to six tiles costs one coin. Storing seven to nine tiles costs two coins, and so on. If there are any tiles you don't wish to store at the end of your turn, or can't afford to store, you can return them to the box, and you won't have to pay for their storage. Once storage is complete, your turn is over, and the next player on their research funding track starts their turn with excavation. When all players have taken their turn, we move to the next phase. There are four rounds in the game that will have an evaluation phase, and you can see those here on the calendar in the fourth, seventh, ninth, and final round. The evaluations are when your exhibited artifacts will gain you points in the form of more admission tickets. On the other rounds, you simply skip evaluation and go straight to the end of the round. The first part of the evaluation phase is collecting admission tickets based on the exhibits you have in the museum. The number beneath your museum markers is the number of victory points you earn. So in this example, the yellow player gets 3, 1, and 1 point for 5 total points. The second part of evaluation is determining who has the oldest artifact of a certain type. In round 4, for example, the oldest vase will score 2 points. In round 7, it's the oldest jug. Round 9 is the oldest mask. And the final round is for the oldest bracelet. To determine the oldest artifact of a type, you look at the date labels under each complete artifact currently in a museum exhibit, combining the century number on the left side and the two other numbers on the right side. So this vase is from the year 236 BC, for example. The higher the number, the older the artifact, so whoever has the highest number under their vase would have the oldest vase. In this example, blue has a vase from the year 236 BC. Yellow has two vases. The oldest is from the year 365 BC. Pink has none. And red has a vase from the year 319 BC. Since yellow has the oldest vase, they score the bonus two points. 
you don't count any of the incomplete artifacts on the ends of the exhibits, nor do you count any tiles that players still have in storage. After the evaluation finishes and all players have collected their admission tickets, the museum's visitors start to lose interest in the old exhibits, and each museum marker drops several spaces depending on the round, which is shown here on the calendar. For example, after the first evaluation, all exhibits drop three spaces. Then after the second evaluation, they drop four spaces. And after round 9, the exhibits drop 5 spaces. And remember, if your museum marker drops below 1, you have to break up that collection and return its artifacts to the box. You'll have to keep bringing in new collections if you want people to keep coming to your exhibits. Once all four phases are over, prepare for the next round. Discard the two old research funding cards and then place the excavator figures on the player order track based on their order on the research funding track, going from left to right. This means the player who went last this round goes first next round. Finally, move the round marker to the next space on the calendar and you're ready to start the next round with drawing new artifacts. If you're at the end of the 12th round, instead, move on to end of game scoring. After the evaluation in the 12th round, there are some additional bonus points to hand out. In addition to the two points for the oldest bracelet, there is also a bonus for the oldest artifacts overall, out of everything still in the museum at the end of the game. The player with the oldest artifact gets three additional points, second oldest gets two, and third oldest gets one point, and the same player can win multiple bonuses. For example, if you had the three oldest artifacts, you would get all six points yourself. Finally, if you have any coins remaining at the end of the game, you gain one point for each complete set of three you have. So if I had 5 coins left over, I would get 1 point, but if I had 6 coins, I would get 2 points. Count up everyone's admission tickets, and the player with the most victory points wins. In this second edition of Pergamon, there's some new tiles you may have noticed earlier that have these 1 point icons on them. These are called Exceptional Artifact Tiles, which are super rare and they will draw in lots of visitors if you exhibit them. They act like normal artifact tiles with a few exceptions. First of all, if you see an exceptional tile in a gallery with this coin icon on it, that means you'll have to spend an additional coin to excavate that tile with the rest. So here, if I wanted the three tiles in gallery 4, I'd have to pay 5 coins total instead of just 4. If you can't or don't want to pay the extra coin, you have to leave that tile behind and take the rest. But if you're excavating an exceptional tile without the coin icon on it, it doesn't cost anything extra. For example, Gallery 2 here would only cost 2 coins, as there are no coin icons on any of the tiles. The other difference with these tiles is how they are scored. When you exhibit a new collection in the museum, in addition to the single ticket you earn, you gain another victory point ticket for each exceptional artifact tile in the collection. It doesn't matter if you use just one half or both halves of the tile, it scores one extra point. And if you have multiple exceptional tiles, each one gives you an additional point. In addition, now that it's in the museum, the exceptional artifact tiles also score an additional point in each evaluation phase on top of your normal scoring. And that's how to play Pergamon 2nd Edition. There are some additional rules in the game for a special two-player variant using the Tomb Raider, and a brand new variant called Antiquities Trading, which allows players to buy or sell their artifact tiles to each other. 
For more information on this game and other Eagle Griffin titles, see the description of this video or check out our website at www.eagle-griffin.com.